Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Katarina, and before I continue, uh, just a quick note, if you can uh, write a message in the chat to tell me if you can hear me. I see a few people typing, and it seems my sound works, which is always a good news. Thank you very much. Uh, so as I said, my name is Katarina. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you uh, to today's webinar on behalf of Child Health. And uh, so for today's, uh, we will have a very interesting speaker and a topic that affects everybody, I believe. So uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm myself very interested in everything that we will learn today. Uh, before uh, I tell you a bit more about the Child Hub and give floor to our partner and then the speaker for today, um, I just want to share a few technical details with you, especially because we have a few new members today who have not attended a Child Hub webinars before. So uh, just a quick note uh, that on the top black bar, you see a speaker icon. Uh, this one is green and you should make sure uh, it remains green during the webinar because in this way you can hear the speaker. If you have uh, problems to hear the speaker, please double check if the speaker's icon is green and uh, if you have any technical difficulties, you can always write us uh, in the chat and we will do our best to assist you. Unfortunately, for presenters, it is not for participants, it is not possible to use microphone, so we kindly ask you to use chat, and please feel free to share your uh, comments and your experience, because I believe everybody can uh, contribute to this topic, um, having uh, the uh, burnout in the child welfare profession today as a main topic. Um, the final remark, our webinars uh, are recorded, and after the session ends, we will post the recording on the webinar page. In this way, you can share it with colleagues who couldn't join us live, and you can go back to the presentation and the recording later if you uh, want to double check some information. Uh, having that said, uh, I just would like to say a few words about the Child Protection Hub. We are a regional network present in eight Southeast European countries and expanding, so uh, you will soon um, here uh, some uh, news, hopefully, uh, in this regard. Uh, but uh, our main aim is to produce and disseminate knowledge in uh, child protection for child protection professionals. We provide a lot of capacity building opportunities, and also we hope to serve as a platform for peer-to-peer -peer exchange, because one of the things we realized is that sometimes these opportunities are missing for professionals who are rather busy and cannot travel to events to attend uh, conferences and, net and network with their colleagues in person. Uh, we hope this webinar serves as uh, such, uh, serves such purpose, and we're really happy to have you all with us today. Uh, in addition, a uh, very important part of Child Hub activities is cooperation with other institutions and organizations in the region, and we are very proud of the cooperation with many partners we have, but this is a special webinar because today we have a um, new uh, partner with us, uh, ISPCAN, and I will give floor uh, to Heather Hein in a moment. She will tell you about uh, ISPCAN uh, more in details, but I just wanted to say from, my, from our side that we are very happy to have you uh, here, and uh, we are really looking forward to future um, cooperation as well because this is, we already have um, a lot of things planned, and uh, uh, you will hear more about this. It's uh, wonderful to have you here. And Heather, would you like to say a few words about ISPCAN and what you do for the Child Hub members who are not uh, so familiar with your activity? Yes, thank you, Katarina. Hello, my name is Heather Heim, and I work for the International Society for the Prevention of Child Abuse and Neglect. I'd like to tell you a little bit about ISPCAN. Uh, ISPCAN is a multidisciplinary nonprofit organization based in the United States that's focused on helping professionals who work with children to prevent and treat child abuse and neglect in all of its forms. Since our founding more than 40 years ago, ISPCAN has connected thousands of professionals from the fields of psychiatry, psychology, medicine, nursing, social work, education, law, public health, and government. We offer our members conferences and congresses, trainings, webinars, forums, and working groups, 
of monthly journal and other key publications and resources. We believe that through education, collaboration, and a multidisciplinary approach, we can end the preventable tra tragedy of abuse and neglect for children everywhere. If you're interested in learning more about ISPCAN, please visit our website at ispcan.org. And thank you very much to Child Hub and our speaker today for making this webinar possible. Here, uh, Heather, and uh, thank you, Heather, uh, for everything. Uh, indeed, uh, all the activities that Iskanda uh, does are uh, very interesting. Uh, so, uh, if you would like to check both websites, Child Hub and ISPAN, you can do it here uh, on the web link section. You have a few links we thought would be useful for you uh, to uh, check out. If you click on them, it will open a new tab in your uh, internet browser, so you don't you will have it there uh, directly to check. Um, thank you all very much. I think it's time to invite uh, Emina Borjanic Bolic, uh, uh, our speaker for today. Emina, welcome and thank you very much for doing this webinar with us. Thank uh, you I'm very much, Katerina. Uh, I hope that you hear me. Without further good ado, enough. I give floor to you. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Emina Borjanic Bolic. I'm a social worker. At the time, I'm lecturing at the College of Social Work in Belgrade, and I have had experience in working with abused and neglect children. Uh, let's go then. I hope that you are ready, and thank you for choosing this webinar. I'm excited, it's my first webinar. That's first we have a poll question. Please vote. Answer. Okay, thank you very much. Let's go. Uh, as you know, I will talk about burnout today. Burnout may be defined as a state of physical, emotional and mental exhaustion that results from long-term involvement in work situations that are emotionally demanding. Uh, Authors uh, start recognize burnout syndrome in the 1970s and they make different definitions. Uh, one of the pioneers in the uh, field, uh, Christina Meslak, said that uh, emotional exhaustion, depersonalization and reduced personal accomplishment lead to burnout. Uh, emotional exhaustion is defined as a feeling of being emotionally overextended and exhausted by one's work. Uh, depersonalization refers to one feeling and impersonal response clients of one's services, care treatment or instructions. It makes us rude and cynical and reduce personal Accomplishment refers to tendency to evaluate uh, our job uh, and uh, oneself negatively, particularly with regard to one's work with clients. Uh, as we said, uh, different authors uh, gave different definitions about burnout. Some of them said it's three-dimensional uh, syndrome, or some of them said it's two or one dimensional syndrome, but all of them agree that emotional exhaustion is something which leads us to burnout. Exhaustion 
is negative response to chronic interpersonal stressors on the job. And the concept of exhaustion captures the basic stress experienced by an individual as it refers to feelings of being overextended and depleted of one's emotional and physical resources. Now we have a new question. And after that, I will uh, explain why I asked that. Okay, thank you for your answers. It's very help helpful. I ask you about uh, traumatized clients because I want to tell something about vicarious trauma and compassion fatigue. Two concepts were in some relation with burnout. Vicarious traumatization may be defined as the transformation of the therapist or helper's inner experience as a result of empathic engagement with survivor clients and their trauma material, and also it includes a sense of responsibility to help the other person. Uh, compassion fatigue is a state experienced by those helping people or animals in distress. It is an extreme state of tension and preoccupation with the suffering of those being helped to the degree that it can create a secondary traumatic stress for helpers. What is important? Uh, for uh, compassion fatigue and vicarious trauma, we need a traumatized client. If and we can suffer because of that. Uh, vicarious trauma needs time as a burnout. And uh, if you don't treat vicarious trauma or secondary trauma, it could lead to burnout. And if we work uh, with uh, in a child protection, Many of kids are traumatized and it's very important to have in mind that we can be secondary traumatized and if we don't deal with that, uh, we can uh, go, we can burn out. Thank you. Uh, now I will tell you something more about source of burnout. Author said that's three most common sources its involvement with people, job setting, personal characteristics. Oh, sorry. Uh, I forget that this poll is here. Can you answer, please? Okay, thank you for your answers. Let's move. Sorry. Involvement with people. Seeing people in a negative terms, focus on problem, lack of, of feedback, positive feedback, and level of emotional stress. Uh, seeing people in a negative terms, we have to be aware that we can't uh, seeing our clients as uh, victims. We have to think about them as a person who survive and persons who have some strengths. Uh, 
we have to take care about our vocabulary. We can't say that people are a problem. We are working with people who have a problems. Uh, sometimes uh, our clients are difficult for cooperation and they did not give us positive feedback. They could say us some nasty words or uh, be threatening and sometimes it's hard to deal with that situation which can uh, make us more emotionally stressed. Another uh, source of burnout is job setting. Uh, it's official and office and environmental uh, climate, basically. But usually we have to do much work in a very uh, short time period with uh, just few resources. Sometimes we feel that we don't have control and that we can't do nothing. And we forget that we are not doing job for a client, that we are doing job with a client and that they have some responsibility for change also. Uh, relationship with co-workers and supervisors are very important because uh, if we, ha we have to use our supervision to be uh, much uh, common, come and understand what is going on with us and uh, co-workers have to be supportive and we have to trust them. Uh, every organization has some plans, policies and procedures and we have to, have to work with that. And personal characteristics. Uh, some authors said that ethnic background and age and experience are very important. Uh, our previous uh, life, our experiences we, we have, marital and family status, if you are in a divorce process or somebody uh, some member of your family is ill or if you are in a grieving uh, period, it could uh, uh, make you more, uh, you could be uh, easy, easier stressed by a uh, job. And of course, our pers personal profile have some influence also self-concept, how we see each other, what is our needs and motivations, and uh, our uh, emotional control. Uh, sorry, I need the uh, uh, water. Now you can see warning signs. Uh, we drawing from friends and family, lose of interest in activities, feeling blue, irritable or hopeless, losing or gaining weight, changes in sleep patterns, immunity, getting sick more often, wanting to hurt self or persons cared for, increased alcohol, cigarettes or drug use, and feeling isolated. I have to share that when I finished job in a shelter for abuse and uh, neglect kids, I realized that I was uh, in one period that my immunity uh, was very low and that I get sick more often than it's common for me. We have a new question. Do you think you have had the manifestation of burnout?
Okay, thank you for your answering. <clears throat> Who has to be aware of burnout? Everybody has to be aware of burnout. Policymakers, managers, supervisors, and direct practice workers. Policymakers have to know something about burnout because they have they could influence on uh, policy making and procedures. Uh, managers have to be aware that uh, knowledge of burnout could help them to be uh, aware of that problem and to work uh, for uh, their team to support teamwork and increase that uh, teamwork. Also, uh, he had or she have to think about his or her leadership skills. Supervisors are very important and they have to uh, fight for uh, adequate uh, supervision. You know, they have to give supervision that direct practice workers need but also they have to take care about uh, themselves and ask for supervision for them if it is needed. And if uh, direct practice workers are aware of uh, burnout, they could do thing, thing and uh, prevent uh, burnout on an individual level. Supervision. Supervision has been conceptualized as a buffer, something that could reduce the development of burnout. It is thus possible that is the more relational and emotional aspect of supervision that is missing from current supervision in my country. Uh, okay, I think I go fast. And how to fight burnout? Uh, we can create emergency escape route, design support environments, eliminate drains, uncover uh, our job values, or define success for yourself. I will uh, tell you, uh, I will share with you a way how I was fight with burnout. Uh, I didn't, in one period uh, at my work, uh, I didn't have a business phone and we didn't have a schedule for be online 40, uh, 24 hours. But uh, it become common that somebody call you and ask a question or uh, switch uh, something. And I realized that phone calls makes me very anxious. And I make the decision that I will not answer the phone. And I was very happy when I realized that I don't have to answer the phone on my private phone, nobody. For just if I want. Maybe you can give me an example of what could be a good strategy to fight burnout. No ideas? Come. Thank you.
Okay, thank you very much. You knew a lot about the strategies. That's very good. As you said, we have to use uh, collegial support. We have to have colleagues we trust. And if, and we have to uh, look after each other and recognize the signs and feel free to to say somebody, okay, something is going on. Maybe that person will be shocked or make a, a step back. But maybe with that comment, you will stop his or hers uh, way to burn out. Also, uh, you have to realize that job is not your life. Job is just part of your life and you have to enjoy in your life. You have to uh, enjoy in activities and doing it more often, spend time with friends and family and go to vacation as somebody says. Of course, if you are deep in a burnout, you probably need uh, psychotherapy and change a job. But take care of yourself. You show me that you know how to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amina. It was uh, very interesting to uh, hear uh, everything and probably audience knows um, a lot also from the personal experience. Uh, so uh, I would like to ask people if you have any questions at this point or if you would like to share any of your experiences, please use the chat. We still have around uh, 10 minutes to go through uh, some of your questions. Uh, while you are typing, I got a question um, in the private chat, probably didn't go to everyone, uh, but uh, somebody asked if you can give an example uh, to, uh, at the very beginning, you made a difference between the two different, um, the two different okay. points uh, compared to burn burnout, and I don't remember exactly everything, but if you can compare how compassion fatigue and the other um, uh, part is different from burnout in an example. If you can just give an uh, everyday uh, example, somebody asked, it would be better to make just a clear difference between what is it, because it's also important uh, yes. for people to when you're recognize working, uh, whether uh, with, it's uh, you know, burnout uh, or something else. When you with traumatized clients, we are talking with them, we are listening to them, we are writing uh, documents and we are reading their history or other documents. And we can become secondary traumatized by uh, involvement in working with them, which means we can be we can start behave like a traumatized person, but we are not basically. We didn't have a trauma experience, but we start uh, behaving like a traumatized person. Uh, that's a, a difference because uh, for burnout, you don't need uh, traumatized clients. You just need uh, difficult uh, clients and you, it's different. <laughs> you will not have that kind of feeling. Uh, uh, I read example uh, uh, that lady sh said she was thinking of she was preparing to go on a wedding celebration and she is preparing a card. In that period, she was working in a shelter for abused uh, women. And uh, she said in one moment when I prepare a card, I was thinking, should I uh, put inside my business card? 
because the saying until death, uh, can you help me? Uh, until death are separated have a different meanings for me. And she said, oh my God, what I'm doing, you know, that's the, the thing that you become traumatized if you think that every marriage can be uh, ending by somebody's violent death. Is it clear enough? Very interesting. Thank you. Yes, the terms I was uh, looking for were uh, vicarious traumatization and uh, compassion fatigue, but this is practically the two, uh, the two points. Uh, okay, uh, here we have a, a question in the chat, and uh, it says, uh, Amina, you mentioned the educational level as factor that influences our perception of the work and emotional burden. Uh, how would that happen as the educational level is not related oh. to self-reflection and mental hygiene? Uh, maybe the lack of knowledge can make us more emotionally involved, uh, make a high expectation, but we find that we can't uh, be successful in that way. But usually, uh, I can say that sometimes uh, there is offering so many education, but just few of them are very useful for us. And it's not important to have uh, many educations. You have to choose the best one or useful one. I'm not sure that they give a correct answer. Okay, this is very interesting. Why, uh, why uh, Luciana, I hope I pronounced uh, your name correctly, uh, is uh, typing. Yes, all right. Uh, well, I was wondering if uh, educational level could, because it, because it relates to mobility, and uh, maybe if a person feels like stuck with a given job and doesn't feel that they have opportunity to change job, they're more likely to experience burnout because it, maybe with better educational level, you can just quit and find a new job. And uh, sometimes you just feel your opportunities are so reduced that you continue doing and uh, then it ends up uh, in a burnout. So I wonder if this could be uh, one of the points, but I really invite everybody else if you agree or disagree with this, and if you have other opinion, just let us know in the chat. It's good to have a debate because this is a very interesting topic and it affects uh, everybody. Uh, maybe, uh, Emina, from your experience, and I also invite everybody else in the chat, but I would be very interested to know, like, if you, when you do your job, do you know if you feel like you are experiencing burnout or you see some of your colleagues may have a problem? Do you know a person in your organization to whom you could turn to and be, be confident that this person will understand the importance of addressing the issue and not just say, well, it's because of this and this, it will pass, no need for us to react. Just from your previous experience where you worked in this shelter, if, uh, if you are aware of some good yeah. practices, uh, how before, some organizations uh, address this, I was maybe. Working in a for shelter me, this house, is very interesting. We didn't have supervision. We have some meetings. We can share something, but maybe psychologist is a person who you will talk if you have a problem. A uh, few years ago, they started with supervision, and I hope so that it's going well. But sometimes e e uh, supervision could be near to psychotherapy, you know, just uh, you have to recognize uh, usually social workers are not educated to understand why some clients make them feel sick or pain in a stomach, what is going on, why can you find some uh, uh, good communication with somebody, why do you have a problem? And you need to talk about that 
kind of problems with somebody to realize what is going on. Yes, this is a very interesting. Well, I'm uh, because we have uh, people from different countries. I'm really interested in uh, what is the experience of others and if they feel like uh, if they know any good practice from uh, the past in your organizations that you experienced and you thought it's really good and other organizations could learn or start adapting it. Uh, it's uh, very good. So if you uh, feel uh, if you feel like, please uh, let us know in the chat because one of the points here is actually to. To be to become aware of what are the small things we can do and um, and uh, improve the situation. I see here that uh, the uh, Maria asked uh, another question, and it is: uh, Do you think uh, organizations should provide some form of coaching so overloaded professionals can share their difficulties? Sometimes it's hard to admit I can't do it all, and I personally believe this is very important uh, point. Oh, and to help health professional to see like very good question. Uh, it's uh, very brave, and it shows that you have a strength and that you are clever if you can realize that you can do something alone, and that you need the help. Uh, a question of trust and I don't know how people will feel to share their experiences in a organizational level. Maybe it will work good. I really don't know. The, the, the issue of uh, Trust is very important and could uh, lead to uh, not to accept supervision also. If you don't trust supervisor or people who are on the supervision, you will not work on yourself. You will not use that supervision for yourself. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for, for, I believe this uh, point, uh, I can't do it all alone. It's uh, very important and it takes a long uh, time until uh, we, we reach this point and be able to accept this. But in fact, it's uh, very uh, important and maybe just tailoring the, the, cult the organizational culture to accept this kind of attitude. Uh, could be helpful. But we have a comment uh, from Maggie, and uh, she says that in the organizational level, uh, it is up to HR department to manage and measure burnout uh, amongst employees by using qualitative and quantitative methods. And in the ideal context, uh, the preventive process uh, comes after studies, yes. analysis, uh, and expertise. Uh, and I did research in 2015, and colleagues from uh, it's Centers for Social Work, it's a uh, main organization for social work. They asked me, what will, uh, what happened good for us if we answer to your questions? Your, they didn't ask for money, they uh, just need some help. And the results shows that they are overloaded, very, very overloaded, and they are in a burnout, and nothing is going on, unfortunately. Thank you, Thank you very much. I think this really leads uh, well to the point by Marisa that uh, along with the concept of vicarious trauma and compassion fatigue, um, we can also work uh, to understand and share the concept of vicarious resilience. And uh, yes, it's uh, very, on one side, it's very important to have research and to have the analysis, but on the other side, it's very important to tra translate the findings uh, into the practice and actually so that those who are making policies 
and know uh, what uh, is the outcome and what would be the best yes. way forward. You so, know, yeah. the, uh, in IT sectors, they have a joke when a financial director and CEO are talking and financial director said, you know, what do you think if we invest in our workers and they leave, we will lose some money. And CEO said, can you imagine the situation if we not invest and they stay, what will going on? But somehow in a social policy, they don't recognize that. This is a very good point. Thank you for sharing. Um, well, uh, I don't see any more people typing, so um, I believe uh, this is it. Uh, thank you very much. I hope it was uh, useful. We will put the recording on our webinar page. Uh, for me, it was uh, very interesting to learn about those concepts and to hear from uh, from everybody else. And thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts. Uh, I just want to uh, thank and you, everybody, for uh, be for being here. And I see that they knew a lot of about burnout and other uh, professional risks. Thank you very much. Okay, wonderful. Well, then just uh, a few more moments of your time. Uh, first of all, thank you, Amina, and then thank everybody else who joined us today. Uh, you will see uh, a poll, and we kindly ask you to answer. Uh, so uh, this should be on the screen. Uh, somebody asked if the material of the PowerPoint will be uh, available. Yes, it will be on our webinar page uh, after this session together with the recording, so you will get it. Uh, if you would like to get a certificate of attendance, you can write us on info at childhub.org and you can get, uh, reach us uh, on this email for anything else you may have. Uh, special thanks to Heather and uh, Jane from Istvan who joined us today. And I'm really looking forward to working with all of you again soon, actually, the whole childhood team. Uh, thank you all very much. Wish you a great afternoon. And uh, just a quick note uh, for uh, some of you who may be interested. Uh, we have another webinar tomorrow. It is a presentation of Kiva Anti-Bullying uh, Initiative. Uh, this started as a modest pro pro project in Finland and uh, grown to be an international, uh, internationally accepted and applied anti-bullying program. So uh, we really we invite you, if you're interested, to join us. Uh, we start tomorrow at 2 p.m. And if you click on Child Hub Webinars, which is uh, the link which is in web link section, you can register there um, uh, to uh, you can register there uh, to join us. Really looking forward to seeing some of you tomorrow, maybe. And uh, please uh, subscribe to the newsletter to stay in touch with us on the new uh, topics that we will be covering in different formats. 